Uh. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. It's Sith Council. I know that we were trying to get you a, a show on Wednesday, but so much dropped leading up to it. So we're doing one on Friday, and I got lucky because my buddy Josh Robert Thompson is going to be on the show today. We're going to talk about not only all things Star Wars, we'll talk about stuff. I guess, look, Lucasfilm for Star Wars, they, they brought Willow out, for, for God's sakes, at Star Wars Celebration. So we can talk about Indiana Jones for a little bit. Why not? We'll do that. Uh, we got that. We got some more stuff to talk about with Andor. We have some, the Jedi, the the last, whatever the freaking thing's called, Fallen Survivor fell off the cliff or something. It's, it's the, the, the new Jedi game. It came out. It looks good. I'm prepared, right, George? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, anyway, <laughs> we, got, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, it's going to be fun. And I'll be honest, I'm going to guess that most of this episode is just going to be People that we love, random people in store situations. If I was gonna, if I was gonna guess, but if you're brand new to the channel and you haven't done it already, do me a favor and subscribe. Show a little class, will you? Just announce. That's all we're asking for. We got the creator here. He's gonna. He wants you to show some class too. Okay, show me some class. Thank you, George. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, just, just announce. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hello. All right. Thank you. Um, well, there's our sponsor. Nothing. Um, you want to make sure you sub to that. You got to subscribe. A good podcast too. Mm -hmm. Head on over to the podcast. Yeah, you do that. And Patreon. Yeah, that, that, that leg was there. Big thing. That's the big thing. Show. Go to patreon.com. We have to do a lot of great stuff over there. But this is gonna be fun, man. We have a really good show. Mike is not here today. Steph's not here. But like I said, I got Josh, and we're gonna be shooting the ish. So let's get into it. It's Sith Council. It's me. It's Josh Robert Thompson. Let's do it. Hi. Stronger. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It is Sith Council, and it's a Friday edition. That's cool. Thanks for joining me here today on the show. And as I mentioned to you, I got the one and the only. Man, Josh, Josh where's the regular people? You are the regular. Who is this guy? <laughs> you better talk about Star Wars only. Don't come on here doing other stuff. Well, you know, well, good luck to that, because I think that's what all this show is going to be today. I subscribe to the Patreon, and I demand a show. Yeah, you're going to get a show. Don't worry. You were late by five minutes with the show. I was late. I was. Josh was it's very. Has been very kind, by the way, and it was. It was way more. Josh was supposed to come in here today, at like 10 a.m. Yeah. And then um, I said, "Hey, I, I haven't set anything up, so can you hang around? We just, we just kind of talked. We talked a lot. I talked about lower thirds. Yeah, a lot of lower third talk. <laughs> and by the way, I want to say yes. amazing job on my lower thirds. If I you guys uh, no, you want to show everybody my I lower third, show it again. Where is it? We had it. We were look at that. Look at that lower third, man. It's beautiful, isn't it? That's really nice. He's look. This guy's great. It's yeah. No, is that? I got him. Uh, That's good. He, and he did it quick. So what yeah. does George? What's George Lucas think about that? Well, it's nice. That's a pretty decent lower third. Yeah. What, uh, what's well, a, what would you have done better, George? Well, I would have made it maybe yellow. I kind of like yellow. You like yellow? Kind of pops. Why? why you, you think know? it pops? Yeah. You kind of go, oh, what's that over there? But yeah. have you changed your opinion on, uh, <laughs> on on the colors over the years, George? Yeah, I used to like blue. Yeah. And what happened? <laughs> then I got older, and you know, I did a lot of peeing. Yeah. So so I go yellow. to the bathroom a lot. So yellow so was, was like, inspiring. Yeah, yellow. You. Mm, yellow. And then I was like, oh, maybe it means, means I'm dehydrated. Okay. So maybe I should. Look, it should actually be clear. I understand. Listen, now that I got you here, yeah. Um, and I know this is a Star Wars show, but uh, sure. let, let's talk about Indiana Jones. Sure. Oh yeah, I love Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah, I know. Great I pictures. Mean, yeah, you, you're a big fan of your own stuff. I, know. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So you had a chance. I want to know. This is something that I, I, I think everybody wants to know. What was George Lucas's thoughts on the new James Mangold trailer for Indiana Jones and in, um, Pocket of New sh Show Title? Yeah, the dial. What is dial it called? Dial of Dial Soap. Dial Soap. I love Dial Soap. It's good. Is that a sponsor of your show? It will uh, be now that well, you're, you're endorsing it. Well, it's uh, it's fine. You know, yeah. I personally, I think uh, the last one was great. Really, you know, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. You love it. I love it. It's fantastic. A lot of gophers in it. Yeah, that. a lot of go. Well, there's three scenes of gophers. Yeah, it's a lot. It's I insisted. You you did. Well, George said George came to me and said, "Look, we have gophers in there. We have gophers." Yeah, and I said, uh, "Listen, I, you know, I, I I don't really want to do gophers, but we'll do gophers." Yeah. If that's what you want, I mean, if, I don't care. You know, it's just a paycheck for me. So, well, Stephen, did he have to? So you were never, you were never convinced otherwise to not put gophers in. Well, I said, look, we made the last film. We made, we made the, we made the last film. Right. <laughs> Are you all right? You okay, Stephen? <laughs> what happened? Lars, no, I'm fine. I mean, it's just very emotional. Yeah. We, we made the last film. We made the job was done. The last yeah, year, yeah. said they ran off in the sunset. We're finished. And the then, then yeah. I said, George said, come on, we make a movie about aliens or softer man. I said, fine, sure. Yeah, but now, but Stephen, you are a producer on this Mangold film. Well, yes, because originally I wasn't going to direct 
uh, Crystal Skull. I said, we'll have some young hot director come in and do it. Yeah. You know, like Roland Emmerich or something like that. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Roland Emmerich, my God. Can you imagine that? No, just tell me what you would Can have imagine done. imagine that? What would you have done with that, George? What a nightmare. Why? You don't like Roland Emmerich, George? Well, I mean, it's, he makes bad pictures. Wow. I make great pictures. You make great pictures. He makes bad Have you seen Day After Tomorrow? Uh, yeah, uh, not in a long time. <laughs> have you seen uh, Independence Day Part like- 2? Oh, part two. Part two. See, I like that you went with part two. You're right. Part two was terrible. Unknown caller. Hello? Hello? My Bluetooth is hooked up. That was was unbelievable. (laughs) That was unbelievable. (laughs) That's great. That was very scary. We both got scared. That was really... I thought I was like, eating something. It's like close encounter. What is this? <laughs> it's, we just talked about in depth on how we don't do the Schmobot on this show anymore. And then, the, and then yeah. I got the theme to, dar- to whatever, the Bane. I was in. having flashbacks. Oh, that's what that was. That was, that the, was the Bane. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. So I, I, cha- I put that on my phone years ago, and I'm just yeah. too lazy to change it. It's pretty great. I mean, it, it's, it's all the time. It'll wake you up. It's all way, the time. It, my pe- my when my wife calls me, it, it plays also, and people go, "Is that your wife's theme?" I'm like, no, it's everybody's. Oh, theme. I would want. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's everybody's. That's theme. your wife's theme. It should be. I understand. Maybe I'll change. I, when I change everybody else's, I'll leave it for her. Oh, that'll be great. You know, or just put Vader. That'll go down. Wow. <laughs> 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 that's great. I love that. that's great. That's great. Let's take it. Let's do it again. We'll yeah, just yeah. do another shot. Sorry, Stephen. So, Stephen, apparently, yeah, yeah. you were. Uh, 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 this is something I always wanted to ask you. You were supposed to direct Return of the Jedi. Why did you not? Well, I just I was busy making other pictures. You know, I was I was uh, we were about to move in production for uh, we we're doing uh, uh, Temple of, Temple of Doom. Okay, you say Return of the Jedi. Which one did you say? Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I was yeah. Yeah. David Lynch. Was- <laughs> David, David Lynch was gonna David Lynch was gonna do it actually at one point. He was. But he's got a headache or something, a migraine couldn't yeah, do he it. Wasn't hurt, he I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I said, George, I, this is your baby. I don't want to do it. You were done. It had nothing to do with the No, idea. no. Well, no. no, no. I was, you know, I, and also I didn't make Poltergeist. Oh. I'll go to my grave. I didn't make Poltergeist. I wasn't there. I wasn't on set every day yeah, no, directing just, that picture. Yeah, fair enough. It's That's, great. But, yeah, I don't know if I believe you. Well, the thing about uh, Steve oh. is uh, Steve is different from me because he uses physical sets. Oh, right. Which is kind of an old-fashioned kind of yeah, throwback. Who, need, who needs yeah, to, it's really lame. Well, what are you thinking about the volume, George? Do you like this volume thing? Oh, I think it's great. It? Yeah, you would like it. Well, this it. was my dream. This is what you wanted to do? I, I was nice. It's nice to see the kids, you know, making use of what I came up with. You get a percentage on that? A little bit. Daddy yeah. gets a little kickback. A little kickback. Yeah, I show up and I say, hey, John Favreau, that, that looks right. stupid. And he goes, okay, I didn't sure. think you knew Favreau's name, so you, you know it now. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny Favreau. Johnny, Johnny F. Johnny F. That's what Johnny they, Favs. Yeah, that's what I call him. That's, he's a great filmmaker. Oh, you like John him Favre. too, Yeah, he did. Yeah, Zathura is one of my favorite movies. Wow. Okay. Space film. Francis I know, film. No, I know the movie. Wild film. Great film. You like Zathura. Well, well, the thing is, when I when I direct a film, I just do two takes. I, we don't waste any time. We just no. go, okay, that's great, Harrison. That's great. That looks great. Let's just work. Okay, cut and print, and then we just move on. Wow, that's how we did a uh, uh, Crystal Skull. We just just got I did one take. I did one take. I think for everything. Yeah, you love that. So Crystal With Skulls. Skulls. Is it true that De Niro was supposed to be in Crystal Skull? You guys have footage on that? <laughs> he's just. He's, yeah, we got. Actually, you, you're right. You're right. Uh, it's me now. Uh, De Niro was uh, did a test screening or an audition. I think. Yeah. Do you have that? Do we have uh, I that? I think here it is. And well, we, it was see. really great working let's with see him. It. Let's see. It. He was actually. Uh, he played. Uh, one of the uh, Russians. Oh, he played one of the Russians. That's right. Bef- <laughs> before there, before he was Russian. <laughs> That's right. Here's a clip. Let me see. So, um, no, I'll, I'll get it. Um, <clears throat> where's the um, the box? Is it thing? Go get, go get the go get the fucking thing. The box. Bring it over. Bring it over. That's great. That's great. Well, well, that's wonderful. That was beautiful. It's a good clip. That was I, really good. I had never heard that clip before, Steve. Yeah, we just, you know, he couldn't get the accent. He's a great actor, right. obviously. I've yeah, never had a yeah. chance to work with Robert De Niro, but yeah, just one take. Crystal Skull is all one take. That's true. We shot it in one day. Uh, one take. We did it one day, that I film. Could, I could see that. No, no, what, George, excuse me? Go ahead. No, George, there's more footage. <laughs> I know that there's more footage that we have here. I love, I love all, you guys, every time you visit the show, there's always footage. Um, the footage that I really was impressed with that nobody has seen um, was the the auditions for the Emperor. Goldblum actually came in and, and auditioned for the Emperor. Oh, is that, that right? Yeah, oh, yeah, he yeah. did. That's he right. Did, is right? that right? Yeah. I'm saying, is that right? You're saying, is that right? But but George and, George and Stephen know yeah. that's right. Yeah, so, uh, okay, uh, uh, Jeff. It's Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, uh, you're the Emperor. You're just this overlord. You've been sort of pulling the strings, you know, kind of like a Bill Lugosi character. 
like in Plan 9 or something. Pull the strings. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, well, uh... Oh, yes. Uh, ooh, you want this? Uh, you want this? Uh, take your weapon. Yes, and strike me down, strike me down. Because, because, uh, wait, you'll, you'll uh, uh, become uh, more powerful uh, than your father or something. But yes, because he, uh, because if he goes, he's gone, Splitsville, uh, you'll take his place. Uh, it's like a Russian a doll that you keep opening it. Oh, there's another one, there's another one. But here, there's only one, there's only one. There's only one, yes. How was, was, how, what, was that, yes? That's, we'll call you. No, we'll man. call you. That's how I Jeff didn't get the game. Really good, though. It was great. I thought it was amazing. I think this, I think where, when he improv the Russian stuff inside of Star Wars, it probably lost <laughs> Is them. that right? I think what inspired Indiana Jones Crystal Skull, though, is what he did. That's true. We, did. we yeah. based it all on that Russian Zal oh, concept. Just, yeah, right. just one take. Now, he doesn't get any. We shot the movie in one day. One day. A full day. <laughs> we came in ahead of schedule. We actually wow. we actually didn't shoot the movie at all. Oh, no. We were so ahead of schedule because we only shot it in one day right. that we ended up not even shooting the movie. Is that we, why we you were hired, one day ahead. And is that why you hired Charlie LaBeouf to get it done quick? <laughs> That's, he came in and did a half yeah, hour. He didn't even know he was there. All those scenes were in a half hour. Oh, wow. You just got all green screen, yeah. Wheeled him in and shot him from a coffee Yeah, we shop. put him on a duck boat. Oh. And uh, with a sword. The sword right. wasn't really there either. Right, right, right. And I said, just kind of go, oh, like that. And then right. we went, ah, we're good. Fuck it. Now, do you think that maybe that's why he's been a little outspoken about working on that film? Boy, boy, what a what a mess, huh? Yeah. What a mess, that guy. Right. Well, he shy as he was young and full of, you know, he, was, he had alcohol problems. And he just, oh, he said I was a hack. He did. So, you know, but... Do not Spielberg does not suffer fools. I mean, when you're no. making those kind of films, by the way, you've seen the documentaries where Spielberg directs. You've seen behind the scenes. Yeah, sure. Spielberg is unbel he is the consummate pro. Yeah. He does not fuck around. No. Granted, you know, he's got tons of money behind him and the best crews in the world. But it's literally like, okay, I think that's it. We're good. All right, cut, print, let's move on. Next shot. Right. They got the next shot set up in five seconds. All right, that's great. Good. Great job, Harrison. Cut, print, go. He doesn't have time for people fucking around, man. No, and that's well. You know? That's why I I think Shia LaBeouf was an amazing actor, great actor. I think he's great, brilliant. I think a as you mentioned, he was in that point of his life where it was just kind of messy. And yeah. I think those studio films, if you're not really locked into them, you're gonna uh, you're just gonna tune out. And, yeah, and he seemed to tune out because you put him in other like whether it's Honey Boy or these other movies, I just, he's brilliant. He's a brilliant actor. He's brilliant. But um, he wasn't too... I, I didn't like him in those movies. I didn't like him in Transformers. I didn't like him because yeah. he didn't seem... Like, you watch what he... He just seemed like another actor that they pull. I mean, here's this Shia LaBeouf's kid. And right, then, right. But then you watch him, like, that's a talented kid, man. No, he is a great... I, I did like him in Transformers, though. I thought he was the, you know, the first one. He's the, he's yeah, the heart of that Everybody likes that first movie. I, I still, I'm, I'm like a hardcore, like, original OG Transformers sure. fan. And then Optimus Prime... Hiding behind a house and nobody noticing. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> well, it's not use your imagination. I produced oh, that movie, right. so yeah, you're choose right, your words carefully. Yeah, I'm sorry, Stephen. Because I'll pull the plug on this whole fucking show. You're just not even going to be Stephen Lane. Honestly, I'll pull, the, I'll pull the plug on you're, this whole thing. You won't even want to be here. I do a lot of this. I, I didn't wear even scarf. know you were going to be here today. I'm, I'm glad always that you are. here. I'm I always know here. you are. I'm glad. Listen, I knew. Good. George, is, uh, George is a close friend. You've been around. Well, like, yeah, we're yeah, buddies. We're buddies now. You've been on the yeah. show quite a while. Just bringing Stephen was, was look. I just I I'm starting the Fablemans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's great. And it's so having Stephen here is is incredible. Well, it's a very personal picture. It's probably one of my most personal pictures outside yeah. of E.T. Outside of E.T. And so it was a not, very... Not very, BFG. Well, BFG was not for most of us. Maybe it's not for us. Spielberg, I am so... I love you so much, man. Steve, wherever you are, I've got every one of your films. I've got every book about <laughs> you. I saw The Fablemans twice. I took my mom. We cried openly. Please, please, God. Josh, I'm sorry you're out. I don't know what this impression is. You're doing me. It's bullshit. I'm sorry. I auditioned for Animaniacs. Yeah. The new series, like, years ago, when they were trying to get it to come back. And they wanted someone. It said, we want someone to do a Spielberg impression. You know, Spielberg produces that show. Yeah. So I just went balls out and like did that. exactly what I'm doing. I didn't get it. No. That's hilarious. But I wonder if it made its way up the chain. I would love if he, to see his reaction. <laughs> what is this? This is... Um that's great. That's well, great. Because well, George is notorious for not having a great sense of humor, right? Like some people say yeah. he's like, you know, you can see. It's funny when you look at that, that skit he did with uh, Seth Green with the, with the, when he throws the Mara Jade guy out. It's hilarious, right? Really, so there's really, certain yeah. times when you look like he does have a sense of humor. Yeah, he likes my stuff. We talked about that. Yeah, 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 yeah we did. Like, they, so like I found out through the, his son. He saw the, the so stuff sometimes, he did collider. Yeah, yeah, it was great. That's what I mean. So like it's like 
there are sometimes he does and there's sometimes where he just he, and I think it's maybe less that he doesn't have a sense of humor and more that he's just a little um uh, sensitive I think he's more sensitive he is he is he was very deeply hurt by uh you know the, the reaction to the prequels yeah. Isn't that although amazing how much love it's getting now the prequels dude I honestly I'm one of those guys that waited quietly in the shadows I just been wait, waiting for everybody to catch on I've been waiting just, you know, year after year, I would just toe the line for those films. Yeah. And it is amazing, man. Even like like Hayden Christensen, to get see that guy him. get yeah. showered with love yeah. at conventions, it's very moving, man. It's great. You know, and I've, I've talked about it a few times. I might have even talked about it with you. Like, I, I'm one of those people that was definitely converted later on, you know, being a OG, uh, the original trilogy fan. Yeah. And, and liking that tone and feel, and it was just so radically different. And I and I went and I saw the I saw Phantom Menace in the theater like six times. But then I was oh, yeah, also, man. I still think dialogue wise, not the best. The stories, yeah, sure. In all three, are really, really good. They're really good. Their man. stories are great. And really then dark. And I've told this story almost to where I'm blue in the face now. But like I was watching the Phantom Menace again at the time. My daughter was probably eight. She's eleven now. But we and um, and we're sitting right there watching the movie and i watched her eyes watching um like it wasn't even jar jar it was whoever it was and i go oh yeah and i watched in such a different light and it went up like really we did a rewatch of of all the the movies and i was like i really i really like these and i think that some people are going to feel the same way differently i know that there are a lot of generations like no way about the new trilogy like yeah. i'm not the more and more i watch the new trilogy mm -hmm. less and less i like yeah, it it's not good it's not but the same thing, the difference is that even though you and I, when we were growing up, it was the original trilogy, and then we were, then there's the generation that saw the prequels, and they were like seven, eight, whatever they were. Yeah. There are people who watched the new trilogy that were like six, seven years old who are going to love these movies when they get older as For well. For sure. Yeah. I think, I think tone-wise, we were there from the beginning, so we saw that it was George's baby. Yeah. There's a tone to those films that is distinctly George. Yes. Especially the prequels. Yes. Which I like. I like George's kind of weird, goofy sense of humor and very awkward way of sometimes handling scenes. But his own vision is what counts. And the new films don't have that. It feels more like a product to me. I agree with you. It's young adult stuff, which we're not. I get it. Movies or TV? Yeah. Are you movies, 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 movies. Yeah, yeah. The so, yeah, because the TV stuff... Okay, so... The TV, finally, you're going to talk about Star Wars. Jesus, we're just waiting for, what is it, half hour? I'm sorry, Unbelievable. Steven. Unbelievable. Well, Steven, I mean, look, I had, I have you, I have Josh, I have Lucas here. I, got, I mean, I got to ask Well, that's all the why questions. we're here, jackass. Talk oh, about Star well, I Wars. I thought we were friends, George. Nobody wants to hear about this crap. Uh, well, all right, I apologize. Although, I do appreciate Josh is uh, a great fan of mine, and yes. he toes the line for my films. Uh, he yeah. even loves Crystal Skull. Yeah, well, that's what I we was were watching it yesterday. That's what we were trying to talk. We were talking about Crystal Skull and everything too. I thought you guys wanted to talk about that. Well, I let me. I will say this: I do love Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Which is nuts, but I understand why. You actually, you explain yourself why you liked it, and I, it made a lot more sense. Well, because of of even on the documentary, the behind the scenes on the Blu-ray, Spielberg explains that he didn't want to do it because Lucas, I wanted to do like Saucer Men, but Lucas's pitch was this is a 1950s B movie. Yeah, this is not a. Uh, the day the earth stood still, this is Invasion of the Saucer Men. Right. This is the second feature on the double bill at the drive-in theater. Yep. And so it's it's definitely not, it's the lesser of the Indiana Jones films, if I have to use that term, but it's the one I've probably, I've watched it so many times. It's the most watchable to me. Really? Out of the it's four It's just of them? fun as hell. Out of the four of them? I love them all. Uh, the first one is, the, look, Raiders of the Lost Ark my is favorite. a masterpiece. Raiders, Raiders is probably one of my favorite it's movies It's a perfect film. Time, yeah. It's, a per it's top ten. Yeah. But but if I'm in the mood to just watch something fun and relax, yeah. something silly, something silly. It, okay. Crystal Skull's very silly. Very silly. I it just, opens with the it oh, the opening is the Paramount logo. Yeah. Which then becomes a dirt mound. Yeah. Which was on a prairie dog, which was hilarious. You, and I when, love prairie dogs. How did you come up with that, George? Well, I spent a lot of time out there in that area of the world. Just watch the prairie dogs the kind of painted pop into desert. Yeah, up. I love little prairie dogs. Kind where of you fun. got the Ewoks from too. Yeah, sure, yeah. I yeah. went, oh, a prairie dog. Oh, it could be a person. Right. Maybe it's a civilization. Sell people. some toys. Yeah, some... like the Vietnamese or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, I want to clarify. The Ewoks were like during the Vietnam, Vietnam War. Yeah, thank you. I want everyone to calm down. No. <laughs> what? I don't want trouble, you know, on I, Twitter. I, I, you know. I want everyone to calm down. <laughs> what did you say about Vietnamese people? Anyway, look, man, the Star Wars series, obviously, I look at differently 
and treat them differently yeah. than the films. That's true. Now, you know, let's talk about the TV the shows same. because we just had Andor, yeah. which was to me the best written Star Wars stuff since uh, since Empire. Yeah, and I know. So you you don't you don't feel that way. And or I call it and or I love it, huh? No, it's good. I haven't finished it, so I'll be on. I, how so far? I, how far? Like four episodes. Okay. You know. Now, why did I did I get bo- I didn't get bored. So it was slow. I just went. Ah. God, I love it so much. But I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it. Yeah. But um, I even Empire Strikes Back is a great film. That's yes. a great film. Yeah. The thing about Empire Strikes Back is. It's it's a more conventional film yeah. than the first film, like than the original Star Wars. Like it's not fully George. Right. It's Kirshner, yeah. It's Kirshner. I'm going to make this movie. We're going to put the camera over here. I think it's important that Chewbacca really feel the pain of his friend. Who cares? I want laser battles. So, I mean, like, look, I I'm not saying it's a bad film at all. I'm not. It's a great film. It's a masterpiece. It's probably the best of that series, yeah. right? But it's conventional. I, I, I want to get this point across. It's not... Uh, George's stuff is weirder. Mm-hmm. George's stuff is like Saturday matinee, 1940s, yeah, yeah, yeah. clunky, cumbersome, weird, and fun. Empire Strikes Back is a great film. But it, it the Andor and some of these other things feel too conventional it feels like a regular you know this is we really want that we want good we want you know real dialogue and real situation you know what i'm you trying want to the say serialized i like the serialized stuff that came from the the pulpy stuff like that came phantom from the- menace is so on the nose man it's fucking brilliant yeah but i also appreciate the beauty of these other films they're not bad films at all see this is the thing even with your crystal skull take right yeah. it's like i don't love crystal skull and i think andor is absolutely Brilliant. Yeah, it is hard for me to argue with the points that you just made because it, if if that's what you're looking, that's what you're looking right. If you're looking for that, if inside because I've I've heard that I've heard the people going well, the, the certain stuff that I like about Star Wars, yes. that's not Andor, right? It's not. But what I push back on are people who say it's not Star Wars at all. This no, no, doesn't no. feel like Star Wars. Well, then you don't watch Star Wars right. because it's just it's a sect of Star Wars that you might not love. But like the building of the empire, the political stuff inside yeah. of it, the intrigue, the spy thriller stuff, that was always there. And the building, this is the most terrifying the empire has ever been. Yeah. Like, because a lot of times the, the stormtroopers are just looked at as like buffoons, right? And like, you remember in New Hope when they find Baru and, and uh, Owen dead. Oh, yeah. You're terrified thinking about what the stormtroopers do because Obi-Wan pitches them as like, they don't miss. And uh, well, clearly they do in, because they well, become so yeah. goofy well. down the line. But this version of them in Andor, I think, couples with that fear. And yeah. it is it, it, the way that it is the most terrifying the Empire has been in a very long time. Well, that's the great part about Star Wars now is it's so vast. Yeah. The world is so large. There's so many options. There's so many different things and facets of the world that you can enjoy. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think it's bad at all. I wouldn't I wouldn't shit talk it. I, yeah. I, I totally appreciate it. It's um, just not your, it's not the thing that you gravitate towards when it comes to Star Wars. No, and I'm, again, that. that's why that. I like Crystal Skull. Because it feels, Pl- I've seen so many of those movies, yeah. those old serials. I mean, right. I own so many of them. Right. Uh, Commando Cody, you know, which is where Commander yeah, Cody yeah, yeah. comes from, is was a series, you know, in the 40s, which I love. Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, all that stuff. So when I see uh, King Solomon's Mines, yep. all that stuff from that era, when I see Crystal Skull, I go, damn, this is right on. The, like these obvious, like yeah. beautiful sets. I can just watch Indiana Jones and Mutt Williams walk through caverns for an hour, and it's just something about... I put my TV in black and white. This is something I've done before. I'll change it to black and white. And watch the Indiana Jones? It is amazing. Okay, see, well, that's... That's fun. Now, when you watch it that particular way, I get it. Yeah. Right? It's not something that I respond to necessarily, right. but, but I get it. It's like that that kind of taste of what you're looking for. There's a difference between, as, as we just said, of saying, okay, look... Um, I like that kind of adventure feel inside of it and the the more kind of serialized 1940s feel. Yeah. And then there's this other stuff that I understand is Star Wars, but it's just not what I gravitate towards. But, right, like I liked Rogue One a which lot. Is, which th- I'm telling you, watch the end of, of Andor then because it's starting to real tie in. But before we get, I want to talk to you about the rest of the, s- oh, the shows. Okay. Oh. I wanted to tell you guys, uh, look, it is time to... Tis the season for clean ball bags. Fa la 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 la. 
Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season, everybody. You got stocking stuffers for white elephants. Manscaped products are the top of everybody's wish list. You got to grab some of those crop mops for your pops or the body buffer for the holiday lover. With this year's white elephant gift and help all the dudes in your life go from eggnog to nice hog this December. And save 20% off and free shipping. You go to manscaped.com slash big thing. Got to use that code big thing. It's amazing. Man stop. Man stop? Sure. Man Manscaped stop. is a one-stop shop for all your holiday needs. It's the perfect gift in the Platinum Package 4.0. I love Manscaped. I'm telling you, we've been with them now since the SEN Live days. It's fantastic. Everybody knows about Manscaped now. It's a great Christmas gift, too. I know everybody's looking for gifts. They, in, 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 you ever, especially the holidays, and you're like your grandfather comes over, your dad comes over, and you got like nose hairs coming out. You basically get to swing on the vines if you wanted to, but save his life, will you? Tell him, hey, get the weed whacker. I love the nose and the ear hair trimmer. I lo- I use them all the time. They're the Shears 2.0. It's their full kit for nail care. They got scissors. They got clippers. They got all of it. So, what you want to do is you want to save twenty percent off and free shipping. You go to manscaped.com slash big thing. You get twenty percent off free shipping. Go to manscaped.com slash big thing. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. All right. So once again, thank you to Manscaped. Make sure you use that code. Manscaped, we love them. You guys should love them too. Manscaped that was a great read. I appreciate that. that I'm, ad. I'm getting really <laughs> what good. a read, man. I'm getting really good at it. Powerful. You think so? Well, I don't know. Did you just order some Manscaped? Yeah. Oh, well, that's Using it right now, as a matter of well, fact. That's what I was ordering with that they buzzing. got their new was. Whisper Quiet one. Oh, my goodness. Couldn't He's sharing his ball bag. <laughs> hey, everybody. Look, it's Josh Robert Thompson. <laughs> that's really good. Is that your Mad Hatter? It's the Mad Hatter, the- yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mustard. Oh, Jeff Goldblum's here. Hello, you're the Grand Master. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, Mad Hatter. Oh, T. Lots of tea bags. Oh. I want tea bags to go any waiver. And then she just left. But look, that was a legend. I got arrested for six months. Oh, very tall, very tall, Sigourney. It was a chair. I had to stand on the tea mouse and the little rabbit. Oh, tea mouse, rabbits, tea oh, bagging. No. Oh. Let's go do cocaine. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> did, some, <laughs> did somebody say cocaine? One time I did a, I had a, I had a, I had a conspirator. Uh, and he and he gave me a cane upside the head, but I said, "Listen, uh, my name is Gary Busey, uh, and I make sure that I do that every time I walk into a room. I say who I am because people don't know. And I shaved my head backwards one time, but the hair didn't come off because it was a bagel." <laughs> Got the acronyms, uh, Gary? I do. Uh, so if you look at, well, you say Gary. Uh-huh. Uh, God uh, always uh, resorts uh, uh, Y, even though Y is started with a W. Yeah. Y sometimes could be for yak, and sometimes I yak up backwards. Yeah. Everyone does backwards. Hey, have you seen a mar- motorcycle? I, I caught it with a horse. <laughs> talking about did i tell you that i met him I yeah you him. did yeah and that was where famous they, gary Busey story were you on a roof you were on a roof with him twice i remember this hot yeah. roof yeah hot roof twice unbelievable hot roof with Busey. I, yeah, that's right and then, and then i did tell you this but ask me ask me a question uh hey uh what how, how are you feeling today what <laughs> what <laughs> that's uh have you been here long are you in town what <laughs> well did I what? Yeah. What's the latest movie, you, you last film you worked what on? What do you exactly think latest means? Well, I mean, your latest newest. Latest is something that comes from the power, power of God. Yeah, God. God. Okay. Gary only dies inside of my mind. Okay. I seen the light. All right. Well, thanks, Gary. What? Good talking to you. What? Oh. <laughs> it's really unnerving. I mean, I know it's you. I'm seeing you as yourself, but it's very it's upsetting. Like, it's like this. What? Yeah. It's like, it's, and, and with the heat and standing on there, it was, it was. Just you insane. and Gary together, man. It was, there were a few other people. There were a few other people uh, up on the roof, but it was, but for some reason he was coming after me, man. He probably knows I do an impression of him. Um, anyway, <laughs> Gary Busey. Is the, I'm a great friend of Gary's and I'm going to tell him that he's an impression. I know. I'm sorry. Because I'm watching the show. So just be careful. I one, time, say about me. I one time shoot, chewed off a piece of Steven Spielberg's slipper and put it in a museum. And I sat inside the museum. It was an art piece. And they said, Gary, come out. I said, if you come at me again, I'm going to take every bit of religion out of your soul and put it into my pet cat. Yeah, that's true. He did. He did, actually. It's a wonderful cat. The cat can levitate. It was amazing. It can levitate. It levitated it when I put a stick upside of its belly, threw it up into the air, and gave it a little bit of a flippy do duty flip. That's true. That's one of the flippy do duty flip. Yeah, that was, we tried to make a movie. We tried to develop a movie. It was a kid's movie called Flippy Doo Duty Flip, which was a CG animated film. 
And Gary, remember this, Gary, he came to me and he pitched the movie. He said, duty, flippy, do, duty, flip. And I said, the title's a little weird. So it's like BFG. We we did a, a F, F, D, F, E, do, F, D, uh, D, F. What? It was called F, D, F, D, F. But it looked terrible on the side of buses, just like BFG. That's why nobody saw it, so it didn't work out. I one time that a bus hit me at 33 miles an hour. At the last minute, I moved to my left and let the tire hit my toe. Uh -huh. I took the toe and I gave it to my ex-wife. She now lives in Phoenix. That's great. <laughs> this is where the guy will comment, uh, Harlock's got your beat, bro. Look at Josh trying to do his little voices. That's all Harloff coming in hot, man. That's all I got. Guys, I love these the guys that get all. It's like, dude, where everyone's fine. No, with Gary, though, all everyone's you got to do with Gary, though, all you, you just have to say whatever comes into your mind. Well, the uh, the acronyms I love, and then oh, the the, the ending up, something happens, like you get hit by a bus, and then you end up somewhere else. Somewhere else. Two seconds later. That's what he, it's just. I mean, yeah, you. I'm telling you, I tell it. My favorite part of that whole story was just like, here are the people I like to interview on this podcast. I would like to have, uh, 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 uh who was, oh, shoot, who was it? it was it was um, um, Milton Berle? No, not Milton Berle. Don Rickles. I'd like to, yeah, I'd have Don Rickles on the show. I'd like to have, uh, I'd like to have so and so and so. Uh, and and is George Carlin still with us? <laughs> no, Gary, he's passed, and uh, and and so did Don Rickles. Oh, Kurt, you should cross him off the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. I love it. Are you doing this? Are you do this in your uh, in stand up? I haven't brought I haven't brought up Gary in, in stand up. No, but I probably I was I was been doing Silvio Dante for my uh, oh yeah for, yeah my, my yeah yeah yeah, yeah that oh was, yeah it's but, great yeah but that was uh, did you have you recently didn't you just get back to doing it again yeah I was I was doing it at um at uh, Flappers I'm going up and I'm probably going to start going more so in love 2023 and we're going to do you still do you got you get up on stage because mm. we're doing we're going to do something mm. we're going to do something in um. In 2023, if you want to come, I'd on. like to. Yeah, so come on. I always feel like you know, like okay, you guys have done a couple over there, or yeah, you've been other, I, in other I, shows. I want to do, I want to do something for this channel where we do like live shows for the fan base and stuff too. And I want to have people who are recognizable on the show, and and not necessarily flappers, but somewhere else, and do like a like a like a theater show. Yeah, man, you know, a bunch of. I love flappers though. It's a great room. Flappers is great. It's got a good main room and everything too. But um, well, it's in Burbank. I like Burbank. Yeah, well, it's that's nice. Well, Jamie Costa got on stage with me up at Flappers. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, and he yeah. came up and we did. And he stood up on stage with me and, and I was just, uh, and he's, because we, he likes to do essentially the same type of thing that, that you and I do where it's like, because you guys have both said it to me and, I, and I'm and i and I'm very, I'm humbled by it where you're just like, it's not like, hey, can you do your impression of, uh, yeah. and it's like, it's, you put them in a scenario. Yeah. And by putting, it makes, makes it more fun. And yeah. that's what I do with Jamie's like, can we do the scenario thing? And I was like, yeah, 100%. So he came up and we did, I just started asking him questions up there. And people, if you don't know, what you guys do and the way that you do it. Like, cause that's what I tell people about both of you is that you guys are actors. You're not impressionists. Yes. You're, thank you for saying well, that. You're an actor. I yes. thought you first, actually before you, I, I want to, I thought you were going to say, and Jamie, I love you. Jamie's a, a, a good friend mm -hmm. and an amazing human being, but I thought you were going to say that you got on stage with Jamie Costa and put him on your lap and did a ventriloquist act. <laughs> I because I should have told Jamie. I, you, I could see Jamie, and he was like, "Hey!" And I thought you were like pulling a no, string. Did, did you see what Jamie just did? <laughs> Jamie just got the, he got booked a big movie. I know it's coming out. It's coming out. He's it was just been now, shooting. I can it. Talked about it now because it's in the it's in the trades. They just announced it, but it's it's a mafia film, and it's him, Barry Pepper, and um, Sam, and Sam, Sam Neil. Neil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was telling me he he texted me and said that. Uh, such a, he's always thinking of everybody. He's he such a nice guy. He goes, sweetheart. hey, man, I'm showing, uh, I'm over here showing Barry Pepper all your, no, we're, we're cracking up at your George Lucas uh, Collider stuff. Oh, that's great. And I'm like, wow, he's on set right now with showing. Barry Pepper yeah. having a laugh at my expense. Fuck this guy. <laughs> no, I, I, that meant a lot to me. Yeah. And Jamie did something that I want to do. I, I, you know, we talked about impressions. Like, I, I, I do impressions. I have a handful that I do, and they're good. I did a shitload of them on the Late Late Show, yeah. um, but I don't really consider myself to be an impressionist. No, you know, there's guys that are. There's like Joe Gaudet, and there's uh, you know we talked about uh, Jeff Richards, and you know the Frank Caliendo, and they they that's what that's what they do. Yeah. Well, look, here's the difference. You know? Here's the difference. What I just did with Gary Busey, that's an impression. 
the difference is when you did De Niro just now, I was looking at you, your face turned into De Niro. Right. It's like, and yeah, it's just like, you, yeah, you know, and it's like, you can look like Jamie when he does Robin Williams. Yeah. Can look like Robin Williams, but then he can do Owen Wilson and he looks like it. And it's not a matter of like this impression. It's like, because you're trying to channel who the person is and what the yeah. being and what the, what the soul it's is. It's fun really. to just be them. Yeah. Like the George Lucas, you, I asked you before we went on air, like, do you find yourself just doing it now? Oh yeah. Like all the time. I right? was watching Crystal Skull last night and just, during the entire film, I'm just like, oh, yeah, that was, that was fun. I remember we shot that. Well, Steve likes to use physical sets. It's not something I would do, but, yeah, it's very old-fashioned. Well, you can tell it's fake. It's obviously fake. Yeah, and you can just think, <laughs> and you think, and that's the only one that I can ever really do that besides, because, like I said, Gary Busey, you're just kind of just talking nonsense and going through, but, Donald, I'm not as good as Joe like that, but I can get myself yeah, yeah, into yeah, a play. Yeah. Like, ah, come on, you try to do that, and I'm not, even though I know you did it for years, right. you're cool in the how it's doing. The problem is people, when they do the Arnold, they always say, ah, come on, they get the yelling. It's, it's the that. gurgling. You got to come on, you say, ha, I, I did the thing with the whiskey the Lulu that had the donkey and the horse. There it is. And yeah. I let them run around in the circle. Sometimes they don't know it and they jump on Whiskey's back and then I say, Come on, Lulu, come catch come catch us. Right, right. And, you know, you know. We well, want to tell a story. You know, you get yeah. in there and when you're watching the movie, we did T2 3D. Right. Remember this T2 3D. 3D. And, and yeah, when you're absolutely. sitting there and you feel that you are part of the movie, it that takes you are you, in it. It takes you back into a time. Yeah, yeah. And I can tell you this time too because he even did not realize I went to Universal Studios right. and he said, not gonna, come on, where's the Terminator ride? He said, it is Transformers now. Right. And I said, Maria, I said, what year am I in? I said, yeah. well, oops. And then the next <laughs> thing I know, I said, hey, <laughs> I need to have something. And they said, what do you want? They said, they got the cookie? And they said, you cannot have a cookie. I said, you can have some milk. And they said, do you want milk? I said, that milk is for babies. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I remember this. I yeah. said this. You, you said, said what I said. You, that's right. I, said I went there Joe. and I said, yeah, there's no more ride. They don't have the E.T. ride anymore. Yeah. They do not have Back to the Future. Unbelievable. Back to the Future. <laughs> yes, and there's and no T2 3D. No. Because this is the one where John Connor, still, you know, Eddie Furlong, yeah. you know, before he lost his teeth, is a great guy. He's I he's love Eddie guy. Furlong. He's a nice guy. But he was there and we were on a motorcycle and said, come here and all this. But I was still good. Yeah. I was not bad. I was still good. You were very good. And I but said, I remember there. when I was bad, I said to Jim Cameron, I said, hey, you know who I am. I am building the bodies. And I, <laughs> if you watch the documentary, I was not the nice to Lou Ferrigno. Right. I said, you could do it. And I said, I can. They said, you can. I punched a horse in Conan. I said, yeah. I can do it. And I did. And yeah, it was exactly. very terrifying. Is, is it Louis? Louis is fantastic. Louis was, had a cruise. Yeah. And you could go on a cruise ship with Louis. Right, it yeah. was a celebrity cruise, I and I would joke with him. I say, "Well, you know, it's uh, if the ship is going down, Louis is not going to know because he can't hear anything. Oh, so yes. all the people be shuffleboard and drowning. And we would be like, "What's going on here?" But I, he loves it. Yeah, what is happening here? If you're not familiar with the show Severance, <laughs> this is what it is. Sometimes we yeah. shut it off. He is right. there, I am here, and they they were letting us both talk. What I like is we're doing quiet, Arnold. Yeah, you can't scream. In Very quiet. Now here's something I wanted to tell you, Arnold. Do you know that? Stallone, even though we've scratched the beef and whatnot, yeah. he's got the Tulsa King. He's running around. Right. His face is still old, but it's still not. It's very strange. Yeah. Look at his mother. But they say that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I apologize. What did you say? What I said was, yeah. "Hey, I called my agent and I said I need a television show now." And I just found out I'm going to be doing a television show. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I got the Fortune Famester. I am learning this now as you're telling me. Yeah, so you, you are me. I let you out in severance. Remember? Why don't you go fuck yourself? <laughs> Get it? Because in the movie, I tell the guy to go fuck himself. Yeah. It's but like it's Richard Dawson when he it, comes in, he says, "Hey, he says, fuck you." Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember. And the, in, in the Running Man, right? Yeah, that's right. And then he would kiss all the women on the yeah. feud. He would go around kissing all he the would women. Kiss them, and it's like almost like me in the trailer all back this, in yeah. the day when the guy walks in and I was doing the thing to the lady, and he yeah. said, "Ah, what are you doing?" I said, "Come on, eating is not cheating." <laughs> That was that was the longest sustained conversation I've ever had as Arnold Schwarzenegger. Good, there you go. Perfect. Very therapeutic. It was good. Wow, that was really special. That was nice. Uh, the Tulsa King, man, is a great show, man. Have you seen Tulsa King? It's hey, you know, bad, you know? I do. My my Stallone is like when, when you when you lose that part of Spielberg where you just mumbles and you can't hear him. That's, that's right. my Stallone. That's like, yeah. Hey, you know, he's telling boy. You right, right. Job. right, man. That's right. That's it, man. It's really <laughs> that's really great. That's great. I love this. Did We're gonna like make that? that film, the Wobbly Scribbly Scrambly, whatever the movie was. Yeah, scribbly Scrambly. Great you know, stuff. You know, it was funny about this. We were, we were, we had I think so far in this conversation. 
conversation we had like 10 minutes like serious conversation <laughs> that arnold thing is going to be the one that everyone clips out and talks about it's funny that we led into that because i was trying i was having a serious conversation about wanting to do other things <laughs> like other than impressions <laughs> i was about to go on this diatribe about I'm an artist. I'm a filmmaker. I want to be a serious <laughs> actor. Ten minute conversation, and you're like, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so here we go. <laughs> you know, it's not the right venue for that. No, not here. Uh, and we haven't talked about Star Wars much either. So, no, not on this and show. Or, yeah. And or, yeah, and or, and or was awesome. Um, loved it, but understood your points completely. So, the acolyte. I'm curious where you land on this one because what is this one? Have you not heard the acolyte? <laughs> Have you not heard of this one? I mean, I've heard the title. I feel it's up your alley, man. Okay. So at the Acolyte to me is probably my most anticipated one thus far that's, that they're that they're going to be releasing. And it's it's the same. Did you? I don't know if you do, but I feel like you like this type of show. Did you watch Russian Doll? Uh, no. Okay, because Russian Doll is a really popular show on Netflix. I have not seen it in Natasha Leone, but it's everybody who watches it raves about it. Right? You haven't seen it either. I have not watched okay, it, but I just right. heard amazing things. And, yeah. I, and it's been Emmy nominated. It's got a great critical response. And the, the, the showrunner, Leslie Headland is the showrunner of, of, and creator of, of the acolyte. Apparently she's really into like the star Wars lore, um, Sith, Sith lore. And from what they said it, that this, um, this is going to really revolve around. It's a hundred years before the Phantom Menace. Okay. Which is a time period that I'm glad we're finally doing oh that's interesting right yeah so and it's about like the infiltration of the sith and how they start to maneuver in because it's the end of the high republic so there's a lot of jedi there's a lot of you know it's it's still this we're gonna actually see a lot of jedi running around with sabers yeah. and everything too and and they've sh there was like some i'm not going to show it here because i don't want to ruin it for people who don't want to see it but there's pictures that leaked and they show it looks like what we've been looking for like yeah. jedi running around the forest and they're fighting with sabers and the is this like the i remember the dark horse comics yeah i grew up so like in the early 90s when dark horse this came old, around i think that's the old republic they did old republic tales yeah. tales of the jedi yes so they did tales of the jedi there was a show that just came out tales the of the animated jedi. show yes kyber crystals yeah. were there kyber crystals in the tales of the jedi holocron was there a holocron not in this one but in the old oh. republic i know well sorry. there's a holocron yeah in the old republic there oh, i love holocrons i know it's what? like a flux capacitor for jedi is that where it came from yeah you plug it into your ship that's what uh oh, that's what big ears that's what dumbo ears did oh yeah hey, play, plug this. i got this thing and plug it in my ship here go Hey guys, it's me. Hey, I'm Kylo Ren. Kylo, hey. I gotta tell you, Adam hey, Driver. Well, it's nice to have you on the show. What's Adam. up? Well, it's, well, it's nothing. But I wanted to. <laughs> last time you, well, you weren't on, but last time I did have a special guest that is here today. Yeah. Morgan Freeman is not a massive fan, apparently. Morgan, I don't. I don't like it. Why don't you like it's it? It's bullshit. Why is that, Morgan? This movie, which one was that movie? Fall of the Jedi, Rise of Skywalker. Rise of the Skywalker. Some bullshit. You didn't like it. The, the opening title screen says, uh, anyway, uh, so the Emperor came back. Right. Guess what? That's like that's like killing off Black Panther in the first two minutes of a movie. Anyway, he died of some mysterious disease. Somehow anyway, he came let's back. move on. Somehow he came back. With Somehow the Emperor came back. Yeah. You know? And then all of a sudden he picks up a, a kills a bunch of people, kid with the Dumbo ears, gets a triangle, whatever that cube or something with Holocron. green liquid. Holocron, sure, it's a bullshit name for a stupid object. Okay. It's a triangle. It's okay. a pyramid. Okay. The miniature pyramid, and he plugs it into a ship, and all of a sudden he's on a planet we never heard of before, Sithville. Yeah, you Sith did, land. You didn't like that. Sithville. You were in a fan. Now there's 4,000 Sith. I thought there could only be two. So only you, one there is, or okay. two times two. So it really pissed you off, It's Morgan. bullshit. No. Okay. Also, I don't want to see this many Jedi. I don't want to see the golden era of no. the Jedi. No, because the mystique of Star Wars was everybody had died out. It was the last of them. Obi-Wan was this old man who's like, come over here, little one. No, oh, don't be afraid. Don't be frightened. And that was mysterious. Oh, old wizard. Oh, he's... But now we got to see all the shit. It's too much. So you don't want to see it. I don't no. care. Wow. I'm sick of it. I'm angry. I'm pissed. I've had a lot of coffee. I'm sorry. I haven't had a morning shit. No, so it's really, it's really, it's everything. Josh is saying something real through Morgan Freeman's voice to you and the audience at home. Channeling. I got one in the chamber. You got to go This back. whole show, I've been uncomfortable. And you haven't been. I'm going to shit my pants in a minute because I've had some coffee in this wonderful uh, show some class. What is this shit? Will the big show, show some class. Will you, will, you tell, will you tell the audience to show just a little bit of class? Hello, everybody. I'm fake Morgan Freeman, and I want you to show a little bit of class. Show some class here on the big show. I got to take a shit. It's a big thing, but that's fine. Morgan. Oh, big show. Big thing? 
That's fine. Who gives a shit? That's fine. I'm sorry. I don't no, care I don't anymore. To, I don't mean to. Oh, to why don't you, you? Why don't you plug a little mini pyramid into your car? Right, and I'm sorry. Go to a planet I, no one I, ever I, heard I, of. I apologize. Let me get you a good lower third next. Bullshit. Time. Yeah, get me a decent lower third. All well, right. that is how, that is kind of, look, it's that thing of, and I, I, I listen, the, the, uh, the, the prequels did this and I love the prequels dearly, but, uh, sometimes the mystique of the thing is more interesting. Agreed. It is interesting to see these things as well, mm -hmm. but if, if it's handled well, you know, maybe it'll be something, the I acolyte. I think that the acolyte, because the tone, I like a little bit more, the reason I, I'll, another reason I liked and or, um, is because I think that what they can do is they're able to balance out. If you put there's certain like I don't know what you felt about Obi Wan and Boba Fett. I wasn't yeah, I wasn't a massive fan. So I think that the tone in that was definitely a little bit more kind of maybe cartoonish, right? Where Andor felt a little bit more adult oriented. Yeah. Now I don't think in the same vein of what you're talking about with the pulpy stuff and anything too that Star Wars should be I think a balance of it. Not everything you can't because Andor was well well received by the critics. You can't make everything like that though because as you said there yeah. are people who want to see a little bit more of that fun Star Wars right. too. So I think there's a balance and I think that you can do it in a way because there's some ridiculous stuff going on in Obi Wan. I bring it all the time. Like the Benny Hill music basically should be playing when Flea's chasing Leia in the, in the yeah. thing. And oh yeah, yeah it's, that's the it's, first episode, isn't it? It's like the first or second, but it's like it's crazy. It's, it's 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 really bad. Like that, and and some. Have you seen the the fan edits uh, that they've done? No. So there's no. some good fan edits and you made and, it better. But, it, but it's so, but it's just simple. Like made it better. Made it better. So it's simple though. But if you if you walk over to Leia when she's in the woods. And Flea just goes, come with us. Cut. You caught her. Yeah. And we don't, well, we don't know what, we, maybe we go, ooh, did, don't know did what he get happened. What happened? Her. Right. And as opposed to him, her outrunning, it's like, why am I fearing any of these villains if a 10-year-old kid can right. outrun them in a forest yeah. and make them go loops and how fake it looked? And it's like the attention to detail on that stuff was the issue is what, but I think that if you can take a balance of that and mix what was kind of so, you know, serious inside of Andor, Mix it with that fun. That's yeah. what I'm hoping the acolyte is. I'm hoping. Well, I'll say this: a... we've been here before. Yeah, I've been here before. We were here before as kids when, in 1985, uh, ABC. It was 84. I think 84 when the Ewok movie came. Oh, right. Out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. these were the dark days when Star Wars was over. Mm -hmm. The films were done. Right. Return of the Jedi came out in 1983. It was a big hit. Yeah. But when that movie came out, yeah, the Zahn novel, same, same complaints. Eh, this movie's getting a little uh, muppety. It's getting yeah, a little yeah, childish, right? Yeah. Okay, so we've been down this road before. So then they're like, "Oh, well, I'm going to make uh, TV movies." Cool. I was there, front and center, to watch the Ewok movie, I love that first and I movie. loved Me it too. Yeah. I loved both of them. I've, I watched them again recently. I think it's no different to me if we're just talking about. Yeah. Let's just modernize it a little bit. It's no different. This is actually helping me see these series in a different light. It's really no different. It's like when the Han Solo, the, the Solo movie came out, and I was like, well, nobody can play Han Solo. There was a whole series about Indiana Jones, played right. by a different actor on right. TV, right. which was fun. Right. It wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but it's separate, right? So, like, Boba Fett, actually, I liked Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett, um, that, that the Robert Rodriguez, the big episode, the big finale with the Rancor yeah. hanging off a building. That's like ridiculous Star Wars. To me, that's like 83 Star that's Wars. Like. That's right in the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. But I do appreciate the other stuff, so I am looking forward to it. But they are separate, the movies yeah. and the TV shows. It's always that way. It's always yeah. been that I way. I just think because the budget's so different. Like, you look in the 1983 yeah. you and Ewok yeah. movie, yeah. it's noticeable mm -hmm. how the budget's. But when right. you have a right. Disney Plus series, Andor looks like, Andor out of all of them, even though it yeah. has a higher budget, it looks significantly better than Obi Wan. Obi Wan looks like the Ewok movie. Obi Wan looks really <laughs> bad, and it's Obi Wan. I know. Obi Wan should have had the biggest budget out of yeah. all of them. Yeah, and it had this. And uh oh, there's the dog. Oh, um, oh dear God. So oh, anyway, well, geez. before we get to the dog, oh God, I do want to tell you guys it's time to Christmas shop, and you guys, if you haven't already done it, Uncommon Goods, browse around the site, go on to that site, man. I get so many people who are saying I checked out Uncommon Goods and I love it. Good. Because if you want to avoid those boring, basic, and bland gifts, Uncommon Goods is your secret weapon. They make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. They have so many great things. Uh, whether you, you know, the good thing about Uncommon Goods is that you support artists and small independent businesses. They look for products that are high quality, unique, and often 
handmade in the U.S. Art, jewelry, kitchen stuff, home and bar, uncommon goods has something for everyone. Not the same lackluster gifts that you can just get anywhere. So with a purchase, you make it uncommon goods. They give back a dollar to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They donated more than two and a half million dollars to date. Now, if you want to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash big thing, uncommongoods.com slash big thing, and you get 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon goods. We're all out of the ordinary. I'm telling you, man, that's where you got to go because if you haven't done your Christmas shopping, you need to go there. You can spend hours on uncommon goods. We love it. So it helps the show. And it'll help you. I'm telling you, don't get the boring gifts. Get uncommon yeah. goods. What a promo. You really Great like promo. what I'm doing. Yeah, top Should've shelf, Should have done man. it as Gary the next Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Next, next time. time. Yeah, next work time. in something, will you? I'll try. I really did good. I did a Manscape dad one time as Arnold. Come on, you just save your balls. How did they do it? How did they? Uh, Manscaped loves it. They that took stuff. it well. Oh, yeah, they love that stuff. Just like, come on. You did stocking stuff. Uh, stuff your own stocking. Yeah. yeah, put me in one of your commercials. I'll do it. Okay. Manscaped. Next time, Georgie. I'll shave my balls live on the air. Well, I mean, that would get, probably get us that probably. What was that one we did? We did one. It was the funniest thing. I, I, I still laugh when I think about it. It was George, you and George doing a Manscaped commercial. Yeah. Uh, and I said, uh, it was, I said, buy it, buy it for your dad or, or use it, <laughs> use it on your dad. Oh, use it on your and you dad. said, well, that's like, oh, well, maybe he can't do it. Maybe he's an invalid. <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then you said, "Yeah, don't be a don't be a jerk. Yeah. Don't be a jerk. Help your dad out. Help your dad out. Help him out." <laughs> That's one of my favorite moments. The ones that we got to do. I got for sure you. they pulled their spots. I'm sure it was. That. No, they did. They came back because I told them you were going to be on the uh. show. <laughs> 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 but um, all right, well, we got other shows. Obviously, we could talk about movies and all that kind of stuff. And then yeah. the well, the, the video game trailer came out yesterday. It was for, uh, Jedi. Uh, Jedi Survivor. Jedi, oh, I always forget okay. what it was. What is this? All right. Yeah, I got. I'm, I'm so bad with the with the name Jedi of it. Jedi Survivor. Right yeah, so the game Cal Kestis is the is the 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 name of the character. Where does he come from? Everyone's talking about this guy. Never heard of him before. So he was in the first um, Fallen Order video game, oh. which I'm so bad at those games that I tell people I always. I mean, I love the story. The story was great, but I kept falling off cliffs and I could never. Yeah. And the maps are terrible. And I anyway, but um, Lego Star Wars is yeah. about where I tapped out. So no, but the, <laughs> I'm telling you, these games are good. Jedi Survivor is yeah. the new, new one. The trailer looks, I thought, pretty pretty great. Cal Kestis, the same kid from Shameless, is is modeled after Cal Kestis. And the rumor is that. We heard that we were that he was going to have his own live action series would be interesting. The games look really good. Um, the the way that they put it all together, it's like it's more of I think it goes back to the idea of what Morgan Freeman was so pissed off about. Yeah. Was the there's still Jedi running around at that time period when we thought they were all dead. But he the question is how how does his journey end? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Is it going to end inside of this game or is it going to end in a live action TV series? I guess it's it might it might all have to do with how good the game sells who gives a shit you don't it's care it's gonna Morgan. suck you think so terrible name cal cal kestis cal kestis Calcis. no kestis calcium no kestis kestis there you kestis. go is it greek he could be <laughs> don't care about a greek uh greek kid greek greek jedi. jedi you don't care about greek greeks jedi? don't use the force you don't think so use olive oil you, oh George, i mean morgan well no, no i'm saying <laughs> George Wait a second! I have nothing to do with this. Well, you could have. I was just standing here hearing what uh, outrageous I, statements. I heard you were a big Caligula fan. <laughs> you were doing a. I thought you were doing a Johnny Carson. It's uh, time. Oh, this is interesting. We've got a, a young man on, coming on the show. A very talented young man. Uh, Cal Kestis is going to be joining us. Uh, he's a Greek Jedi. That's interesting. I never heard of that before. So maybe he uses the, the force to. Uh, Restore the Parthenon. I don't know. We're going to find out. Oh, that's, oh, oh, Ed, you like that. Oh, you? I love it. Well, Ed, you'll you'll like this because, uh, you know, he's he's Greek and you use... Uh, how much olive oil do you have in your hair right 63%. now? 63%. There we go. All right. Uh, Doc is here. Doc is not here. Cal Kestis is my, my guest. <laughs> A Johnny Sounds Carson like a bed. Cal we Kestis. Done, we wait, no, Johnny Carson was an abusive alcoholic. <laughs> I do not appreciate you doing this impression on your show. Christian, do not let this man back on. And the Greek joke. Wow, really? A joke about Greeks and olive oil? Hack. You're a hack. Well, you, oh, your viewers are really angry. I feel like, I felt like you just represented my last four <laughs> jobs. <laughs> my oh, favorite man. thing about the... Let me ask you this. When you post a video, when you do a video yeah. on your channel, yeah. um, do, you, do, you, do you have people that don't really watch the video... But they'll comment. comment like there'll be something in the video that you're like the title of your video could be why George Lucas gave up Star Wars. Right. And the first comment will be, so why did he give up Star Wars? Like, Is, do, do people do like with, with articles? They'll read the title of the article, but they won't read the article. Sometimes. Is that so, how this yeah, works? Well, so, for example, the other day we, we did we did a video where we were talking about the D.C. 
stuff that was going on. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, and, you know, they had canceled Wonder Woman 3. And right. All. So we reported on that. We were talking about that, myself and Winston. And then in the middle of the show, the James Gunn tweeted out and talked about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, about his response. is saying that some of it's true, some of it isn't. So we were, talked about that. But we were getting comments in the beginning. You know, James Gunn already talked about this. <laughs> James Gunn, he, he said some of it's true, some of it isn't. I'm like, watch the show. Watch the show. We find it out about That's the exactly it. In. I did a video recently where I talked about the Late Late Show. I was on the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson years ago. I played the talking robot skeleton, Jeff Peterson. There's still thousands of people that don't know how it worked. Was it a puppet? Did I operate it? How did I get the job? So I thought I would do a Q&A video. And the title of it is, How I Got the Jeff Peterson Gig. And one of the first comments is, so how, so how'd you get the gig? Watch the video. Don't be a dick. This is why you've never worked since. My favorite is how you're screaming down into I know. the comment section. Well, I want it. Exactly. I want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Well, I'm trying not to blow it out. No, but I didn't realize. I actually didn't realize. I'm down here, dude. That's hilarious. It should be screaming up. It's good. Well, speaking of screaming up, let's take a couple questions from the audience. And then we'll, uh, oh, wow. we'll get out of here. All right. All right. So a few came in. All right, guys, this is from Brian Kalmus. Do you think that Kathleen Kennedy even likes Star Wars? If Brian. she wasn't producing it, do you think she would ever watch it? Um, I hate to say, answer the question like this without sounding like a, a, a turd, but no, I don't think she likes it. Oh, really? No, I don't. I don't think, I, I, I don't think she like is a massive fan of like the lore. And I don't think like when you can, and I don't necessarily think this is always a requirement for the job, but like if you look at something, let's say we just talk about James Gunn. James Gunn will talk a year off about DC. If you sat down with him at a, bar or a coffee shop or whatever too he's gonna right. talk your ear off about it right is kathleen kennedy gonna talk your ear off about star wars lore no. or is she gonna talk to you about the first time her and george did produce the movie and talked about the yeah, cool yeah. stuff that happened on sure. set she's a producer she's a great producer she's a great she's a, i want to be clear kathleen kennedy is a powerful yeah. one of I, the top producers in easily. the world i hate when people give her crap and say oh she's not a good she's a Great She's been around a long She's time. A great man. producer, but yeah. there's a difference between being a great producer and being someone who runs like the creative and everything yeah. too. And so I don't think that she's a massive Star Wars fan. And I think that probably she took, not. No, I think she took. It's like if you take the gig for like a sports team, and you're like, okay, I'm not necessarily a big fan of the of the Yankees, right? But I think they got enough tools where I can take them to a championship. Yeah. And I think that you still got to know the, the the back history of who were the great first baseman, who did this, who did that. It helps, right? It doesn't always mean you, you, like she's got a lot of wins. I think she's why she was wise enough to start bringing in people like uh, you know John Favreau and Dave Filoni on the TV side, though. Yes, but I think you're going to see that happen on the film side. It hasn't worked thus far. No, there's rumors. Rumors are that you know it's there's one of two. There's three scenarios here. Of you pick which one you think is going to happen. Scenario one, she extends her contract past 2025 when I think it is supposed to run out. Scenario two, she 2025, it ends, she decides to leave. Scenario three, this is what the rumor is, is that after Indiana Jones comes out, she if it hits, she hits her winning shot, yeah. she walks off the court and starts her own company somewhere. Yeah. Which one do you think of any of those three? I think I think Indy's going to hit. I do too. Well, there was she's already with uh, Frank Marshall. Kennedy Marshall mm -hmm. has been around for years. Yeah, and it, they've made a ton of great films. And they could do more. And I think that's probably what's going to happen. I also you think, think after that, Indy. Yeah. So you think she's going to leave this year? I think Next so. year. I wow. think so. Okay. Interesting. The it's, Dial of Destiny. I love yeah. that title. Man. I think. She, I hope it's about time travel. Yeah, it, it, that's the rumor. Man, these kids. Can I just, Go ahead. can you guys calm down? Oh, man. Where's my camera? Right there. Can you calm down? As you guys saw the indie trailer, it's all true. So the girl, she's going to take over at the end. And I guess at the end, they have her going back in time to all the other Indiana Jones movies. It's bullshit. It's just woke nonsense. And Indy's time traveling, and I cannot deal with it. And the rumors are all true. I saw it. I saw the trailer. And based on the trailer, I figured it out. We're going to talk for three hours about it. Lucas film will burn. Listen, I hope it is about time travel because that's right in the pot. Are you kidding me? The Shankara stones ripping a guy's heart out. He's still alive. Jumping out of an airplane aliens. and uh, aliens. The, the Ark of the covenant. Come on. Right. It's all there. Yeah. Why not? 
I, I who mean, cares? If it's done for me, it's if it's done right. I don't care if it's done right. Uh, we'll see how it plays Some out. Some of that CG though, man. Some of it, good or bad? Bad. The the horse the horse in New York wasn't great, but the but the the, the deep fake deep fake's great. Holy moly! When he's sitting there, and I thought that was a shot from Last Crusade. It, it yes, I. <laughs> oh God! Go for it. You know. It's the thing about the un, uh, the what is it ticker Undead? tape the ticker oh. tape parade, yeah the yeah because yeah. Harrison Ford died like five yeah, years ago I don't know if anybody knows seven. that he's not it with was, us anymore it was seven he's gone yeah right uh, he's it uh, that parade scene where mm-hmm. he's on the horse and everything it's not so much that he you know obviously it's somebody else's face on I mean mm-hmm. fine whatever I, I can suspend disbelief I don't care yeah. you know but everything it's the Jurassic World problem. Mm-hmm. Because everything now is CG, because there's really no like real background, there's like really no set, so everything well, that's why is. I love Andor. You know, you know what I mean. It, everything doesn't. It doesn't look real. Yeah. Every, it, somehow it doesn't. Yeah, you but, know, but the the stuff in the volume, uh, on Mandalorian. Yeah, is well, done well. Right. The stuff did Obi Wan use the volume? So, yeah. Okay. Didn't look good. Not done yeah. well. Right. But they but didn't Andor, understand. Andor, no volume. Right. So that's cool, too. I'd like to, you know, that, that. that I appreciate. Yeah. yeah. I love George, and I appreciate what he did, but I hope that the whole film uh, doesn't look like that. Yeah. The, the, but that's one the, shot. It's one, one shot. shot. That was the only shot that bothered you know? me. The, the other stuff, we'll see. But all right. So Fine. let's get let's get another question here. Sure, come on, quick. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hurry up, man. John H. Campbell Jr. Odds oh, that wow. Darth Plagueis is somehow mentioned in the Acolyte. Well, it's 100 years before. So the question would be, um, it just in the book he was the species was mune, and then if that's the case. You could live, you could you could have him live two three hundred years and absolutely could be the the guy. But if they're going to make him human and retcon it, then he probably wouldn't be around yet. This is Darth Plagueis the Wise. The well, you came up with it, George. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. You, you were very specific that it was mune. Yeah, I said that. You I did. remember I said that. Do you go back on it now? No, no. No, I was just remembering as you said it. I went, oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's been gonna, a while. Just kind of put it back. Well, it's in been a form. while. It's, it's been a while. Like a we Harry shot Potter. Thing. Yeah, yeah. How oh, come you didn't come ooh. up with Harry Potter, George. How come I didn't? No, yeah. I actually did. You did. Yeah, it was called Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> well done. And then that homeless bitch, you know, wrote it in her oh. car or something. And oh. now look at her now. Wow. Anyway, I uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. And well, that was that Joseph Campbell who asked that question. Yes, it was. He was he was a mentor of mine. No, John Campbell. It was John Campbell. John W. Campbell actually wrote uh, the the novel, the short story, Who Goes There, which was the oh. basis for The Thing. Oh, there you go. John Carpenter's The I Thing. I just saw it recently. Brilliant film. First time I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're getting a lot of facts from me. Yeah, Just based on a question. Okay. Well, I like what you I don't even doing. read the question. I read the name. No, it just kind of comes to you like a yeah. vision. John Campbell. All right. Junior. Reese. Rika. Reese. Rika. Reese. Happens when I don't have Rika. My, I don't have my glass. Oh, my yeah. Glass oh, geez. I can't see shit. Reese Parkin. Rack Parkin. Given the choice... Would Josh rather voice a robot or an alien character in a Disney Plus Star Wars show? Great question. Uh, now, oh, so it's, is it a live action show? Yeah, I'm assuming it's yeah, a live action yeah. show. Alien character? Or, oh, I would or rather voice. I would rather be. Well, he said voice though. Yeah. So would okay. So voice a robot. So be hidden away. No, I'd rather be an alien character an if alien. I'm in prosthetics. In prosthetics. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like a weird cameo. Yeah, it'd be fun. Like uh, in Mandalorian, who's the who's in the first episode? Uh, Horatio Sands. The yeah. weird. Uh, how you doing, man? You know, um, why does that work for me? Because I, I, when I first saw it initially, it it bothered me, and I was yeah. like, I don't know. And then he came back in again, and it, and it kind of felt very pre- prequelish to me, and it, and it started to fit in. Did it yeah. fit in for you? Yeah, no, I love it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's no different than the uh, the two headed uh, announcer. I hated those guys. Phantom Menace. I hated them. You hate those still, guys. Still hate them. Yeah, it looks like Quadranero's yeah. power cup. Like is yeah. Lo- yeah, that's um. But who is that? That's um that's comedian. That does the yeah one oh. of one of the heads. Oh, I don't know. I don't yeah, remember. I forgot his name. I Tom, uh, Tom, Tom. Tom. Someone will say. Tom someone will say right now. Tom James. <laughs> that was Tom James. One of my favorite uh, Singer. comedians. Oh, comedians. Good. Singer, comedian. Good. good, good. Um, all right. Can Talker. Josh Robert Thompson give us his list of 2023 Star Wars shows that you're excited about the most? <laughs> least, least the most. I'll give. I'll give you. I'll give it to me. Okay. You can all right. All right. You got Mandalorian season three. Sure. Yeah. You got. Um, <clears throat> you got Ahsoka. All right, and then you've got Skeleton Crew, which is going to be John Watts, director of, of Spider Man, doing a series that the rumor is that it's going to spawn outside. Uh, I think I saw this on Making Star Wars. They're going to they're going to 
do a um, in the unknown region. It's going to kind of tie into the Thrawn storyline. Oh yeah. So you got those three that are coming out in 2023 and Bad Batch. Yeah. The uh, Mandalorian season three. That's number one. It's probably number one. Okay. I don't. I don't. I have no interest in Ahsoka. Bad Batch. I should, okay. but I, I don't no. care. Uh, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'm hoping. Uh, I think the Christmas special. The is there going to be a Christmas? Are they bringing that no, back? That was Guardians of the Galaxy. No, the Star Wars Christmas special. Oh. With B. Arthur. Remember B. Arthur remember singing B. Arthur. to all the patrons in the bar? Yes, yeah, my old friend. What a time we've had. Uh, uh, we're drinking weird liquid in a bar. If you can't appreciate that, then you're you're a fool. I gotta watch it again. Uh, <laughs> Art Carney. Anyway, go ahead. Justin Zdarsky. Jeff Peterson. Would he be Jedi or Sith? Oh, he's Sith. Hundred percent. Yeah, there's no question. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, he's uh, Jeff Peterson would be the guy in. Uh, actually, he'd be the guy in uh, Jabba's palace in Return of the Jedi. Oh, doing yeah. Doing this, who was voiced by the director Richard Marquand. Was he the, really? Yeah, he oh, did the voice that. of. You are, what is it? You are Act feisty, little, feisty one. little one, but yeah. you'll soon learn some respect. That was, That's like my favorite moment in that movie. Right. And it's so scary and weird. Yeah. And you're like, God, what's going on down there? Yeah. There's all this shit going on down here. Burning feet. And That's stuff. what Jeff Peterson would do. I, you'll I, soon absolutely. learn some respect on the master's sail barge <laughs> in my pants. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I'm here as well. All right. Uh, well, Thanks, they also <laughs> appreciate that. David Lozano, uh, doing, I'll David? have him do the whole podcast as Liam Neeson. Do you do a Liam Neeson? Uh, I do, yes. I didn't know. I don't, have Perhaps, you ever done one on this show? Uh, right no, it maybe. Could be. There you go. With Liam Neeson, does, how did Liam Neeson feel? How did you feel about your uh, your your brief appearance in Obi-Wan? Oh, you know, it was um, very interesting to me. Why is that? To put on the beard. Yeah. You know, I'm a lot older now. Yeah. You know, and so... We shot those scenes at my house. Oh, in green screen. Oh, were you in your Wasn't bathroom? Actually, there. I was nude. Oh, and they CGI the an robe, outfit on you. The robe is CG. Interesting. So I don't really remember the oh. dialogue. They said, "Just look up here," and I looked up there and I said, "Oh, be one. Don't, don't forget to finish your breakfast or whatever the line was. Right, right, don't right. forget to shit before sure, we sure. leave." Well, you notoriously you were lying to people. You said people were asking you if you oh. were in it. Did you, was it that you were lying or you just didn't realize you were in it? Well, right? it's, it's the money. It's the money. Got to, you've got a contract. You know, you can't say anything. When they say don't talk, I don't talk. I say, listen, I don't have anything to do with that shite. Oh, I went a bit far, and I you should probably try to oversell it. Well, I don't. I. I would never do it again. Right. I said things like, oh, my right. experience was and you'll, terrible. And you'll probably do it again tomorrow yeah. if they asked you. I'm a, I'm a bit thinner, and I look yeah. different. Right. But if they and did a Qui-Gon show tomorrow, you'd sign up in a heartbeat. Absolutely. That's what I thought. Okay. 80 years old. All right. Last question. <laughs> right. Here it is. This is, uh, D, this is from Richard Genge. Do you hey, think, don't. Do you think all the current Disney Plus... Do you think all the Disney Plus shows, <laughs> current, exhausted reading. You know, current and ones due out in the next couple of years will somehow cross over and climax the same timeline where the next movie will then move on from? So I don't know God. if they're going to do that into a movie, but I do think there'll be like a big event. I hope. My my goal is that because you know that uh, Fa not Favre, Filoni was very much into the Thrawn books and, he, and he'd worked with Zahn, even bringing yeah. him back into the uh, Rebels. And I think by... Obviously, we working because of the way that the timeline worked with those books. But to do a big crossover, massive, huge event is something I've been dreaming for. And if they do all of this, in, because all, because all of Favreau and Filoni's shows are playing in the same timeline. Yeah, right. They're playing in the time right after, like five years after Jedi. So if all of this is like a culmination to this big event on television, and maybe even to the movies, I think that could be something pretty special. I, I this it seems like there's too many. Do I have to follow the video games, no. the animated series? No. They, I, Just for, the series. But I think for some people, it is it can be off putting. Mm -hmm. It can be daunting. Like because Marvel, they start yeah they start throwing out characters. At first, it was fine. You could kind of get it. But I think once Solo came around and they started like what's some oh Darth Maul girl no, the, oh. the girl that's in um, uh, Willow yeah. is in yeah. Solo Infus Ness right. So I I didn't know who that was. Neither did I? You didn't. No. Okay, but was that from the was that from the animated no, this is series? Brand new. It was new. Yeah, she was oh, brand I new. thought it was something that they had. No, introduced. the mall was the one that, that was... I thought was going to be confusing. I saw that with Ken Knapsack, and I and when they brought Maul in, I said this is going to confuse people because yeah. we know he's alive. Right. We watch the animated series, right. but the casual fan, like I thought that guy died. Right. Like most people who didn't watch the series, like what the hell's going on? Exactly. I mean, it forces you to try to get it. 
tries to force the people to, to find out more about it, yeah. which I think, I mean, they, I like the choice, to be honest, because I think that it, it it allows you to finally tie it in and make it all make sense. And it shows that it is that that those shows are canon right. and that he did survive. Well, I just like when Jimmy Smith shows up. Me too. I there's, love every time he shows up. There's nothing better than, you know, when you're watching Rogue One, honestly, yeah. the best part of Rogue One is Jimmy Smith's. I love Jimmy Smith. And there's a guy off camera in Rogue One. There's mm-hmm. a big scene where they're all meeting. Can I, can I tell you exactly what yeah. you're going to say? Yeah. What is she proposing? That's exactly the line. <laughs> he goes like this. Talk about it on the show often. What is she proposing? Oh, do I have it? I had it. I had it. He's so upset. I got it. Yeah. I had it as a well, thing, and I got rid of yeah, it. He dropped oh. the ball. We have a sh- we have a shirt of what, what is. Oh, is that right? It could be so much so because. Well, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's great. It's a brilliant I'll line, and Jimmy Jimmy Smith's uh, is also uh, in you know the the, the Obi Wan series. Yes, he is. He's the best part. It'll probably be in Andor season two. Well, I can't wait. Anytime yeah. you put Smiths in something. Yeah. And in fact, there's a great scene in my masterpiece, Attack of the Clones. Oh, yeah. The very end. The very end of the film. Just before the wedding, the forbidden wedding, yes. ooh, with that kiss that lingers. Yeah, a little, yeah. little long. It's yeah, a little creepy. Fart. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. You're I. Uh, it's a scene where Jimmy Smiths is he's upset. He's not too upset. I said, don't be too upset. You're on a balcony with everybody, and Palpatine's there, and you're looking out at all the yeah. clone troopers heading off to battle. What I want you to do is show me you're upset without really showing me you're upset. And then Jimmy does this with his fist. He goes like this. Just like that. It's unbelievable. Simple, oh, my that. God. It tells you How everything. How many times did you watch that in the, the 4,000. 4,000. 4,000. Yeah, I like it. said, cut it again. Good. Do it again. Well, Change his hand. Speaking about cutting it, Josh has been holding in a dump for about an hour, so we're going to uh, let him go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. released. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here today. A very special episode of Sith Council. We hope that, A, you enjoyed it on a Friday. B, you hope it was very uh, non-traditional, and I really enjoyed it, the fact that we just kind of went off on a, on a bunch of different tangents. Go ahead and leave us some comments. Hit the like button. If you haven't already done it, everybody, make sure you subscribe. Hit that button. I'm trying to get to 70000 by the end of the year. You can do it. Come on. Oh, that was outrageous. Podcast. Thank you. Too. Uh, do the uh, podcast. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> podcast promo. The Patreon, do that. All of it. Everybody, thank you for joining us. For Josh Robert Thompson, where can they find you, by the way, on your uh, on your channel? Yeah, it's right there on my lower oh, thirds. There you go. Find Perfect. me on Twitter, at Josh R. Thompson. Sorry, guys. Sorry I ruined your Sith Council. I didn't, I'll didn't. i come on next time. This was perfect. I'll watch all the shows. I want to do more shows like I'll this. I'll finish Andor. <laughs> Kingdom of the Crystal Skull rules. Everybody, thank you for joining us. Once again, it's Sith Council for me and Josh Robert Thompson. Peace out, Mother Fs. I can.